Chris Paul cut by the Phoenix Suns. That's all we know. On today's episode of Locked On Suns, we'll try to guess what more there might be and what comes next. Let's go. You are Locked On Suns, your daily Phoenix Suns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And I'm your host, Brendan Clean, a credentialed media member covering the Suns for the past six seasons, a writer at suns.com and the host of the Just Basketball Show, wherever you get your podcast. Thank you so much for making Locked On Suns your first listen post Chris Paul waiver. Uh, <laughs> we are still making sense of it, but we're here for you just like we are after all big news breaks. And every single weekday of the offseason and beyond. Hit follow or subscribe wherever you're finding this show to get it in your feed each and every day. Become an everydayer. Get locked onto your favorite team, uh, the Suns, who do insane things like this all the time. You can also follow along at Locked On PHX Suns, where you can uh, see Aaron's admission that this is the second time we did this podcast and uh, get in <laughs> on mailbags and news and all the rest. Aaron Edwards is here to join us. For the second time today, we did a whole Matt Ishbia show that may or may not see the light of day. We'll probably put it out. It's evergreen. But we are back to do a Chris Paul recap show of this big move, the first domino in the Suns offseason. Today's show brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash NBA and enter the promo code LOCKEDONNBA. And when you do, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti-style tumbler with every single order. Pretty good deal. I have one. They're good. We'll talk about Bird Dogs more later in the show. But Chris Paul being waived by the Suns, the big news of the day. Came down three hours after we recorded, came down around two o'clock. And Aaron, I will just start here um, before we get into all the different things that may or may not happen. What was your reaction when you just saw Chris Haynes tweet, quote, Phoenix Suns have notified star Chris Paul that he will be waived, making the future Hall of Famer one of the top free agents this offseason. Um, it was that Vogel didn't really mention him yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and that was kind of like where I landed. It was like, he didn't get talked about during that press conference. And the way Vogel likes to run stuff, his defense and all of that, I was just like, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of like, I was in the middle of driving and I got the Chris Hayes notification at the light. <laughs> I was on McDowell in seventh and I was just like, oh, this is happening like now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's happening right now is exactly, I think, what a lot of people probably felt. And I think that was my initial reaction, too. Um, I didn't think about the vocal part, but you're right. I mean, it, 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 he went out of his way to talk about Aiton, which we talked about on the other show today. And um, Chris Paul, not so much. I think he said his name when he was talking yeah. about the roster. But even then, it was sort of like he said Booker and Durant and then kind of reminded himself like, oh yeah, everybody's going to overreact <laughs> if I don't throw the other guys in there. So he did say it, but that really, it was only at that point. Um, but it's in terms of the timing where I went is, wow, they really didn't, didn't get a trade for him. Right. Cause there's just, there's just no need for this right now, unless there's something going on. And that's part of why you and I waited a bit to record. That's part of what I was hoping we might find out. There's really nothing else that's, that's come since. Um, but they didn't have to do this right now. His contract was going to guarantee on June 30th. So that would have meant that you could wait for the draft to play out. That could have meant that you, you know, take it up all the way to the wire, basically of free agency before you really had to do anything. So they could have done draft night deals. They could have done any number of things. And instead this drops today. So obviously what I think people want to hear us give our opinion on is what do you think happens now, what's your best guess as to are they going to keep him, which we can talk about? Are they just done with him? What do you feel like the next domino might be? I think <clears throat> just in terms of like how you treat a Hall of Famer and all that, like I think that he's resigning. Like I sat with it for a little bit and it just makes sense. And we said it right after we got blown out in another closeout game and they came out immediately after and they were like, Chris Paul saying we're giving him his contract and all that. We we're like, they didn't have to do that today. <laughs> like they never had to tell us that that early. So I think that 
the conversation had to have happened. They had to let them know already. And that's where they landed. And they wanted to just give the full vote of confidence saying like, he's a son, all this, we're giving him his money. Because otherwise there was no point in ever doing that if you were going to cut him. Like you could have just waited yeah. this whole thing out. Like everybody thought we were going to do in the first place and then either cut him or trade him after. There was no point in putting that statement out the day after we got, we got eliminated. It was just pretty pointless. Yeah. So what came out at that point, I believe if I'm remembering right, and you might remember too, Aaron, is that they said that they were going to guarantee the deal. Or, or that it leaked. They didn't. Yeah, it's like James Jones came yeah. out and said that. But that that was what, and it was Chris Haynes back then as well, saying that they were going to guarantee the deal. Um, and the, and why that was surprising was just like, well, he's not really playing up to that level, regardless of what you think. Like no matter what you think he, what team he's going to be on, what role he might play, thirty something, thirty one million dollars just didn't make a lot of sense, uh, given his injuries and the way he kind of fell off this past season. This makes more sense because at least it's kind of in line with what we thought, but both of them from a timing standpoint are very early. Um, I wanted to clarify that the guarantee date would have been the 28th. It doesn't really make a huge difference, but just so I have that right. And then Sean Sharania um, just reported something, as did Dwayne Rankin. So we are starting to get a little bit more news. And both Shams and Dwayne have it that the Suns and Paul are exploring multiple options. So that just adds a little bit of an extra layer here uh, in terms of why did the, why did this come out if uh, it isn't a done deal? But um, we'll, we'll actually get to that in the next segment. I want to just explain to people how they can keep him because I think that was confusing. Um, basically, he had a half of his contract or so guaranteed this year. I think fifteen point eight million out of thirty point eight million. If they waive him and eat that whole 15 now, they're legally allowed to bring him back, assuming that he clears waivers. But he will because clearing, uh, claiming him on waivers would mean paying him his full contract, not a reduced amount. So somebody else would have to swallow up that amount. And I think there was some cap people saying no one even has the amount of space to do that. So that's not really a concern. So then the Suns could keep him, could just re-sign him at a minimum or something like that. If they stretch him, which is where you would then spread out, he technically has two years left on his contract, if people remember, because he has a not fully non-guaranteed next year. So you would be stretching the $15.8 million that he's guaranteed for the next two years over five years. You get the amount left times two plus one is the rule. Um, sometimes days like this, it's a little embarrassing how much <laughs> of this nonsense I know, but that's the deal, right? <laughs> and uh, on I'm the, glad you in know the it, honestly. <laughs> in the CBA... <laughs> And this is courtesy of our Locked On Blazers host who DM'd me the CBA and was like, hey, it's uh, page 19, section this, <laughs> bullet point that. And I was like, all right, thank you. Uh, that is where you can find, and I tweeted this at Clean 14 if people want it, um, that, the sun, that any team that waves uh, and stretches somebody, you're not able to re-sign that player for the next, uh, the duration of whatever that amount of time is. So for the Suns, like I just said, it's five years they're not going to be able to, they wouldn't be able to re-sign Chris Paul for five years until that contract was fully done. The dude will be out of the league by then, obviously. So um, that's not an option. So either they're stretching him in order to get the lower cap hit this season and have a little more flexibility with salaries, or they're waiving him outright, eating that $16 million, and then that would allow them to re-sign him if they want to. So in the next segment, let's talk about why things came out the way that they did today. And, and really look closer at keeping him, if that is indeed like the most likely scenario. First today's show, guys, brought to you by eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. Uh, they are really smart to put that on the ad read for today, considering we're wondering if Chris Paul is one of those. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. <laughs> every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head over to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around, just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check. The other part will fit or get your money back because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop at eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. 
Okay, so I'll pass the the microphone back to you, Aaron. I agree that the most likely thing is keeping Chris Paul. I think that if they're going to do it, it's going to be at a minimum because that would really be the only thing financially that would make much sense. Otherwise, it's just like, why go through all of this if you're just going to give him like another $12 million? You might as well just guarantee the full 30 for all, like really at that point. So that's where I sit too. I think that waiving him, eating the 15.8, this season that he's guaranteed, so nothing on the books past this year, and then re-signing him for this season or maybe a multiple-year deal, but probably just one on a minimum contract, a veteran minimum, $2.8 million, I think it would be for him or something like that. That's where I think it is um, as well. Does that mean that he is going to the bench? Does that mean they have something else up their sleeve at the guard spot? I think that's kind of the, the next question, which is what, I saw you putting some tweets out on and whatever too. So what do you feel like uh, this means for kind of the rest of the guard rotation and everything else? Um, I think Chris Paul is a lot of things and self-aware is one of them. Like <laughs> you can tell, like he knows what this team needs. He has Kevin Durant and he has Devin Booker. And we know why he's still in the league. It's literally only one reason why he's still playing basketball. And if he puts it in the sun's hands to trade him, he can end up anywhere. He can literally end up anywhere. And then he's just playing on maybe a lottery team on the bench. They they wave him. Like, I think the plan was always to maybe let him ride the bench here. Well, not ride the bench, but run a second unit while our starters finally are able to run or something like that. But it, this is one of his only chances. Like, he's not getting traded to a contender. They're not going to lose something to get Chris Paul. I don't think anybody's down to do that. Does that surprise you, though? Because I will admit, like, I, I probably sound like an idiot to some people listening to this because I was sitting here saying they could get it quite a bit back for him, and apparently that was just not in the cards. He, what, for a contender? He's missed games every playoff series I mean, any the last team. three years. Clearly no like, team I, wanted him. Forget a, 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 a <laughs> contender. I mean, maybe they just didn't want to do the disrespectful thing of sending him somewhere else, so maybe you're right there, but I just thought yeah, somebody yeah. would want to trade something just to get him i guess i was wrong yeah and that's like the other part like i said earlier even when we were talking about getting rid of when we did our uh trade deadline thing it were, no at the beginning of the season and you're like i can see the sense trading chris paul or something and i was mm -hmm. like i don't see monty or them like being nfl dirty i don't think that yeah. the Suns can get their hands nfl dirty and this would kind of be NFL dirty, like off season, like just dropping a vet in the middle and kind of just eating a contract. That's NFL stuff. And I think in the NBA, players take that kind of stuff pretty serious when they're thinking about potential teams. And that's why I don't think that Chris Paul would be done like that. I really think that the plan was always to do that because otherwise, like this is really NFL-y and the NBA doesn't do stuff like that. It's a Hall of Famer. Mm hmm it's also NFL-ish from the perspective of how this whole contract has worked. And uh, David Nash, who did a newsletter for a while and, and is on, he's uh, at the four-point play on Twitter, uh, dunking on people who don't know what they're talking about with the cap. That's how you're going to know him. Um, <laughs> no shade, just what he's doing. Um, he added a few years back when Chris signed this deal that really what we had on our hands here was like a <clears throat> renegotiation of a contract, which... The NBA doesn't really do that, but in this case, it pretty much was. Because if you remember when Chris Paul got here, he had two years basically left on his contract. One guaranteed, and then he had a player option. When he re-signed on the deal that he's currently on with Phoenix after that finals run, he technically opted out of the deal that he signed back with Houston and then started a new deal. But the only real guaranteed money on it was everything he was guaranteed on the contract he still had plus 15 million. And so plus this 16 million, I guess, uh, that he just, that we're talking about today. And so really it was like, or I don't even think it was actually of the full 16 million above it. It just ended up a touch above where he was. And then it gave the Suns the flexibility of they could stretch it over a lot of seasons. They could do what they're doing today. I don't know if all the way back then they thought keeping him on a, on a small contract like this, which might be where this is headed was really an option or if they thought of that along the way once he started to fall off a little bit and they realized, hey, we actually could get him back on a, on a really tiny contract and it wouldn't be like disrespectful like maybe we thought it would have been if we talked about that, uh, you know, after the finals. But 
that's where we are. Very NFL-ish as well. Um, I hear you on the self-awareness side of things. Um, but I think he could have done this and maybe he still could. Like you would imagine, right, that the Lakers and the Clippers are going to be putting the full court press on him. Hey, come where your family is. Come back to L.A. You, we'll, we're closer to a championship than those guys. Whatever it is. I don't think we're done with the idea that he could still go somewhere else because once he's waived, he's waived. I mean, I'm sure yeah. that they're all having conversations behind the scenes, but this doesn't guarantee him to come back to Phoenix. And if it does, then I guess kudos to him for being just really committed to this whole thing. Cause that's a lot of, a lot of handshakes and a lot of behind the scenes stuff that I don't feel like he owes the Suns any of that. Frankly, like I, that surprises me that he would go that far with it. Yeah. The LA thing kind of makes sense, but my whole thing is why would they want to do that? Like they saw him play, <laughs> like he's going to have to play off ball on one of those teams and yeah. he kind of wasn't all the way into it. You're playing off ball and watching LeBron do stuff. And you're going to have to – LeBron, he doesn't have point guard, point guards. He never has. He That's just not how he plays. He's the point guard. And Chris Paul showed this year that he doesn't want to do that. <laughs> like It was hard for him. Monty tried to get him to do it every once in a while. But once the chips were down, we went back to that same pick and roll with Aiton, and he kind of just started running his own show again. So I don't know. But so that's where that's what I was thinking, too, is I'm like, OK, yes, if he plays with LeBron, he's going to have to play off ball. I don't really know how likely any of that is, but I just wanted to throw it out so that it's not like he's coming back to the Suns, lock it in. And, and then, you know, something else happens and we seem like we weren't at least ready for that. But he's also going to have to play off ball here and he doesn't really know Frank Vogel at all. It's not like he, you know. It's not like they went and got whatever Chris Paul's favorite assistant coaches in the league, or they, you know, hired Willie Green back from the Pelicans or whatever his choice would have been. It's Frank Vogel. I mean, what, I don't know who that, their, their relationship. He's going to have to play off the ball as we saw. I agree. We did see them resort back to that in the playoffs. So maybe there's a little bit of like, if he's here, then he has a little more control over things. But is that enough? Because I think if he went to the Clippers, for instance, which is where I made up a bunch of trades for him last week when I was doing a show, like Eric Gordon and Nicholas Batum for Chris Paul was one of the ones that I threw out there. That one felt good to me because they that they need somebody like him and they're deep enough where he wouldn't have had to play a huge role. He wouldn't have had to play every night, wouldn't have had to play a bunch of minutes and he could have coasted a little bit. Is that what it is? It's just the comfort and control that he feels like he might have here and just being like, yeah, it's not a perfect role, but I am getting older. And at the very least, like I know Book, I know KD, I trust those guys. And that's the best spot for me to kind of like fade into the sunset. I guess that's a good argument, but it's just a lot of like trust in this organization that it's just like he's only been here a little while. Yeah, I think that they're still compared to those two. With the Lakers, it's no control. Like, you're playing golf ball, you're playing with LeBron, you're playing with AD. With the Clippers, it's with a team that kind of dropped you already, and you don't know when those dudes are going to play. You're going to play the minutes. Like, the stars on that team, you don't know when they're playing. And I think he kind of had a certainty when it came to Book and KD, at least a little bit more than those two, when, like, I don't have to carry this. I'm not going to play those crazy minutes. And he wants to win a ring. And I think when it comes down to that, it's just a better chance of dudes. You're not even sure if they're going to play, if their knees are going to hold up, what's going to hurt this time and all that. Plus you're hurt all the time too. Like, I just think that the, if they do have a plan and I think they have to come to Chris Paul with a plan on what they were doing next, if they are going to cut his money, because they're going to be like, we're not going to just cut your money because we're cutting it. Like, what are you going to do with this money? I'm, giving you guys back pretty much then yeah if they had a good plan on that then i can see him being down to do it yeah i mean at the end of the day it's their choice but i agree with you it's superstars in the nba you don't just say we're taking the 15 million that's not guaranteed and f you you know <laughs> we'll see if we retire your number in a few years thanks for everything you did goodbye <laughs> it wouldn't have been like that so i would agree he probably has some sort of say here which i think is part of what shams and Dwayne rankin are, are getting at with their kind of more hesitant 
uh, thing. I believe what Chris Haynes reported, but I guess I'm just a little confused why it got out from him in such a like definite way. And then Shams and, and Dwayne are a little more maybe because it's like unless they're still holding out hope they're going to trade him, which I don't think they would be holding out hope for if Chris Haynes has what he has then there's yeah. not really anything else to be wait to to wait on. So I don't I don't understand that whole side of it. Usually I feel like I can parse through why did that leak and whatever it meant. I I have no idea in this case. Um I will say Shams has re, ha, has tweeted out his own story now. Originally I just saw it going around on other people's accounts and he included the possibility of quote waving and re-signing him in free agency. So that's the first person outside of like Gambo to actually say it. Brian Windhorst like alluded to it. People are throwing yeah. that clip on Twitter now too of him doing his very windy s kind of like, oh, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, you yeah. Know. Um, basically pointing out, he said like, there's a way for Chris to be a son without paying him $30 million, which uh, not hard to read between the lines. Um, but you mentioned other options. I think there is still a possibility that even with the trust and control and whatever the elements of wanting to be in Phoenix might be for Chris, I think that there's still a decent, if not good chance that part of what will happen here, especially when you're not committing so much money to somebody uh, to keep them as your starter, that maybe he won't be the starter. And this might be the first step towards some other stuff at, at that guard spot. So let's talk about those options. Let's talk about what the cap stuff will allow them to do. I've seen people throwing out free agent guards as if all of them are on the table. We'll talk about which ones are and aren't and what the Suns might do next. First, today's show brought to you as well by Bird Dogs. The whole entire Lock On Podcast Network got a sample of Bird Dogs. We have an athletic, short, and uh, uh, like a casual, leisurely, out for errands, you know, whatever types of short around the house. Both are incredible. Both are breathable, flexible soft, comfortable stuff that anywhere you really are, you want, but the anti-stink, anti-sweat wicking fabric on the inside, they have a built-in uh, underlayer, so you can go with underwear, without, whatever feels comfortable for you. And in Arizona, that stuff is just as important as how it looks. We all know that. We've all been here long enough to know that you got to have something that's going to fit you, look good, but also not make you, uh, you know, too moist or, or smelly where you don't want to be. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA into the promo code locked on NBA to get a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NBA for that free Yeti style tumbler along with your first order. You will not want to take your bird dogs off. That's our promise. All right, let's close things out, Aaron. Um, I did a show at the very beginning of the off season saying no respectfully on James Harden and Kyrie Irving. <laughs> uh, I don't think this is real. I don't think the Harden thing is real. I think he's going to Philadelphia or he's going to Houston. I knew this um, part was going to come up. A <laughs> little bit of clickbait on that show by me, but uh, I do think the other name in that w- is still a possibility. The Suns were apparently right there uh, at, the, <laughs> at the deadline. You want to talk about another reason that this that that Chris Paul has no reason to trust this organization? They were ready to to dump him in Brooklyn for the ha- rest of the season. Uh, for Kyrie Irving and and somehow he's like all right cool no big deal um, but that was the first sign that this team is interested in him that was before the Durant trade really seemed to be an option for the Suns and then once they realized they could do that they said all right Kyrie can go to Dallas and we'll we'll get the bigger the bigger fish here but it seems like they still have interest I think everybody who's listened to this show long enough knows you and I aren't like bending over backwards to go get Kyrie Irving but do you think it's at least a possibility more so than it was now that this Chris Paul thing has happened? Or do you still think it's sort of a who knows, maybe we'll see type of thing? I thought it was a possibility when KD or Kyrie both said like, yeah, they still kind of want to do this again. It just didn't work in Brooklyn. And that was like the real worry because this is a player's league. And the second you want to, they want to do something, then the possibility is it can happen. KD said, Maybe a week last, like a week ago, last or uh, uh, next week, or it was like two weeks last year that he wanted to be a son, and yep. he became a son in February. <laughs> so I think that just gonna throw in of, another I was right, right there, just just so yeah, everybody. We had a good time with that, even though we were stressing a little bit. But yeah, like the second a player puts something out there, they're not messing around. Like 
yeah. it automatically becomes a, like a possibility after that. So yeah, they mentioned it already. It's out in the world. It's out, it's out there that they still kind of want to do this. And that's all it takes is for it to be out there. So let's go through the cap stuff from a sun standpoint real quick. So if they uh, waive Chris Paul, which we talked about is, is probably the most likely thing, which would allow them the possibility of, of re-signing him. That puts them, they're not going to have cap space, period. Unless you think that they're, I mean, even if they, <laughs> even if they stretch Chris Paul, which got, would get them the most possible flexibility with Paul, the Paul side of things, cut campaign who's non-guaranteed this is the last year of his deal you could cut him outright zero dollars on the cap uh and then by the way (laughs) maybe i hope that they could figure something out but yeah uh, i mean i guess at that point it's kind of like is it worth it to just pay him and keep him or just cut him i don't know we'll see what else they can do um Darius Baisley has a big cap hold. Tory Craig has a big cap hold. That's just like the thing that sits there while the free agency plays out that just like weighs down your books. If you just like renounce those guys, get them off your books completely, all that stuff, you still have to basically dump DeAndre Ayton on a team with cap space, take like no money back in that trade, maybe do the same thing with Landry Shamit. That's how much the Suns would have to do. Basically, they would get their roster down to Devin Booker and Kevin Durant to have any space. And even then, it's not like $70 million. It's like, 40 or something like that. So they're not, that's not an option. Just so everybody's under understands that if they waive Chris Paul, like we said, they are uh, $17 million under the tax, which is really the more important part at this point, not the cap. They're not going to have cap space. It's more how much under the tax are they going to be? And especially under that second apron, some people call it the super tax, whatever you want to say. Um, if they just straight wave him, they're 13.3 under the tax. And I believe like uh 20 something under the super tax. So that gives them a lot of flexibility to where um, they can use the full mid-level exception. They can use the biannual exception, all these different things. They're not really having to worry about that really, really high cap where you start to get the trade rules and the limitations on all this different stuff. That's probably more than anything where this is going to go. Um, and so if it's Kyrie Irving or anybody else, you're talking about a situation where they have basically that to use, the, the regular mid-level exception, which this year is like $12 million. Kyrie Irving has made, uh, <laughs> let me see here, $233 million in his <laughs> NBA career. We, we heard that he was theoretically considering, oh, maybe I will um, take the taxpayer mid-level last summer if he had opted out with Brooklyn then it sort of seemed like yeah that was never really a possibility um yeah when it comes to him in words you kind of just you you just gotta yeah (laughs) so the question is basically would he take 12 million dollars to come to Phoenix would he take the mid-level exception over one or two seasons or three seasons whatever it is do you think he's at that point in his career where he's just going to take less money and come be somewhere that I don't know he's happy or teammates he wants? I don't know what Kyrie, what drives Kyrie, but I think I think that big of a pay decrease when he could make 30, 40, something like that with Dallas, I just find that hard to imagine that he would do that. Yeah, you lost me immediately when you said makes him happy. Like We don't know what brings him joy. We don't know his plans. We don't know what he'll do. So, yes, I'm automatically going to say no, he won't take a pay cut. But he also speaks like a person that money doesn't drive him. But he's also not dumb. I don't know. Like, I don't know him. (laughs) He's just so – you can't try to read him. Like, LeBron thought that they were going to play for years because they won a ring together, and then they lost the next one. And Kyrie just didn't like being part of something like that, even though they could have kept doing this for a really long time. So, yeah, like – it's hard to determine what Kyrie will do because he does whatever he wants. And that can be literally anything. Is there anyone else who interests you? Mark guard Holtz. wise. <laughs> I was saying say no? that. Huh? No, I said, Who'd Markel you Fultz. Oh, Mark Fultz trade. It would have I, to be right. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that he would fit this team. He doesn't like, he could play off ball, but he attacks and we don't really have like, KD gets to the rim and he gets fouled almost like, I think almost a little bit more than book. He was getting fouled a lot at the beginning of the season. 
But yeah, I think just a guard that attacks who you're confident, like confident can get to the line, who's strong. Like Rubio was sort of that before we let him go, but this is like a whole new level, just young athletic point guard. We just haven't had that in a while. Yeah, I think that's a good one. I think he could be available, could be gettable. Um, I think uh, obviously Fred Van Vliet will be on people's minds. We know the Suns had interest in him at the deadline too. I'm tired I don't, of small guards. I'm so tired of it. <laughs> I don't disagree with you. Um, I, I've never really loved I mean, at the deadline, if it had been possible, all right, maybe. Uh, yeah. Now I just, you know, I also don't think he's taking $12 million. Could you do a, tra- a sign and trade? That's obviously, that was a possibility before Chris Paul stuff. That's still a possibility. Could you send Aiton to Toronto for Van Vliet? Sure. I don't know what that deal looks like. Um, I don't know what their pivot will be. I don't know what other guard options that they're going to get excited about. I'm ready for anything. I'm ready for Kyrie. We'll see. I wanted to close out the show though. We did get an, an article from Woj as we were recording here. And I think I have the answer to why this all uh, played out the way that it did, Uh (laughs) uh, Aaron. So he said, Phoenix Suns ownership and executives had a series of conversations with Chris Paul and his reps about the all-star point guard's future with the franchise on Wednesday, including the possibility that he could be waived by the NBA's June 28th guarantee date on his contract, sources told ESPN. The Suns said that they're still working through several possibilities. Phoenix plans to explore trade opportunities, including Paul and DeAndre Ayton. Paul wants to continue, continues to want to return to the Suns and partner with his close friend, Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. Nevertheless, Paul and his reps want the organization to make a quicker decision on his future so that he can proceed out into the marketplace. If indeed they ultimately waive him. And that last sentence, I think you should read it as, uh, or he also, Woj also has in here. The expectation is that the Suns would stretch and waive Paul's contract, spreading the cap hit over a longer term. So we're back to uh Wendy and Woj, not saying the same thing, which is always a fun subplot with these, uh, Things where they're not allowed to disagree with each other, but then they do, and they just kind of say it <laughs> quietly. It sounds like they met with the guy with him today, and it sounds like maybe him and his agents weren't fully pleased with whatever was put uh, out there by the Suns in that meeting, and so they told Haynes, "Yeah, they're about to cut us." Yeah, and I think that's why when Hay when Haynes released it, I was like, "This is from Chris Paul." It just in my head, it just seemed immediately like Chris Paul said that, and not the yeah. team. And it just seemed like a power play because if it was Woj or Shams, like I would have been like, all right, like maybe, but Haynes, Haynes is a player, <laughs> player rep. Like yeah. he works for the players and it just seemed like Chris Paul, who we know, obviously he's cool with, released that. It's kind of like, I don't know, you're arguing with your family or something and then another family member comes in or a friend And you just storm out and you're like, I don't know, I guess we're breaking up or, you know what I mean? It (laughs) sounds like it was kind of like that type of thing where you're just, you know, maybe a little, uh, a little running a little high, running a little emotional. And maybe he just sort of put it out there. Like it's in their hands. Like it's kind of what he said at, at, at exit interviews. Honestly, he was like, yeah, he asked if he was, he was asked if he was going to be coming back. And he basically said, I'm under contract. We'll see. (laughs) Sounds like kind of what he's saying right now. Um, but more to come, I'm sure. Uh, might have to postpone our Frank Vogel guest for Thursday evening at this <laughs> point because there might be more Chris Paul news to discuss tomorrow. But either way, I'll be here for you guys. Hit follow or subscribe. Get this show in your feed every single Monday through Friday. Become an everydayer this offseason and beyond. Listen to Locked on NBA in the meantime. They'll get you caught up with the finals, offseason stuff, and more. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow to close out the week.